feel free to fire away. You're Polish, aren't you? Your name is Polish, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I moved here when I was like seven, so I'm pretty much English at this point. Oh, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I come from Poland. Excellent, yeah, because I spend a lot of time there. Well, I have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah Leo said you're going soon, are you? Uh, Friday, yeah. Whereabouts? Well, uh, we're based in Krakow, but we travel around, you know, so it's a, it's a little tour about, I think it's about eight dates, um, which, is, which is quite small for, for us, but we're just trying to get back into it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a tough time at the moment, isn't it? So <laughs> Absolutely. Little steps. Yeah, it's quite, quite weird being able to do it in Poland, really, because you can't do that in England. Yeah, no. Well, I don't think it's currently too bad over in Poland, so maybe that's why. No. I was there um, back in March. I was touring in March, and um, really? we, got, we got through about two gigs, I think, and then the whole thing got locked down, and I got out yeah. of the country just in time. Um, it, it was kind of weird, um, but they, they locked down straight away, no, no messing about. Yeah. And I think that's why they've got less cases, really. Seems to me, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, I imagine so. But still, we'll have to see how it goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, best of luck with that. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully it'll be a good time. I hope so, yeah, I hope so. Anyway, yeah, go ahead then, fire away, whatever you want to ask me. How would you describe your sound? It's blues rock, blues um, rock. but it's um, original songs, so... There's a little bit of um, modern twist in it, I guess, but it's it's uh, fairly much old old school blues rock with with original songs. Very nice. Uh, did you do anything before doing music, and how did you get started with? Uh, 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 well, I've group? always played music. I mean, I I was five when I started, so I don't really remember a time when I didn't play music, but. I guess it was age 14, I started playing in pubs and clubs and stuff, um, pubs and clubs in, in the UK, um, still at school. Left school at 15, but I was a printer then for a while. You had to do something to, to earn money for guitars and whatever. So yeah. I, I'm a qualified printer, but um, uh, sometime during that, maybe five years or so after that, I went off on my first real professional stint, which was American Army bases in Germany, around about six, I think that was. <laughs> and uh, that never really looked back. I've had various jobs in between, but I suppose about 25 years or so of professional music, I would say. Well, that's quite a long time. You've been in the industry a while then, have you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, uh, where, where have you performed that really stood out to you? Okay, well, um, well, for years initially, we just uh, trudged around the UK um, after the German stint, and it took a long time to get back out there. Um, then it was, uh, I signed a, a record deal in Europe eventually, and they were based in Switzerland. So we did a lot in Switzerland um, in the 80s, I think, and early 90s, uh, which was a, it's a beautiful country and there were some fantastic gigs. Um, then we also um, obviously went to Austria, which is next door. Uh, and then the, through the record company, I got the contact to go to Poland and I've been doing that for maybe, it's probably getting on for 20 years, at least once or twice a year touring in Poland. One of the most beautiful and best gigs was in Croatia though. Croatia is a beautiful place, and um, mm. uh, we started out there. We started. We did a gig in Slovenia, neighbouring uh, country, and people from Croatia were there, and that opened the door. And uh, then we started touring, doing uh, big festivals in Croatia, and, uh, and that was always fantastic, along with beautiful weather and all the rest of it. So uh, I would say Croatia stands out for me. Very nice. Yeah, Croatia is a beautiful country. I've only been once i think but it is absolutely gorgeous there isn't it yeah it is it is yeah did one recently actually in um yeah. Kastav, a place called Kastav, mm -hmm. and uh, they've got this thing called jerry rick's blues festival um there were probably about five thousand people there and we headlined on 
one of the nights and uh, it was just, it's a very memorable, probably the best gig I've done in recent mm. times, you know, but the, the one before that was probably Croatia as well. So it's kind of, yeah. it's a win-win when you go out there, you know, I don't know why. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Uh, do you have any uh, releases or platforms, so like a website or a YouTube channel or anything like that that we can link to? Or Yeah, definitely. I've got my website, which is my kind of little business, www.densitymusic.com. But if you Googled me, Keith Thompson Band, you'll find me. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, which is growing quite a lot at the moment due, due to the lockdown. Um, mm. I guess you'll find me there. What drove you towards making music or what still drives you towards making music as opposed to anything else? Uh, well, as I said, I can't really remember doing much else. I, you know, I don't remember thinking, oh, that's a good idea. I mean, I was five years old and I was just attracted to it. I guess um, we're talking back in the 60s, really, aren't we? And, uh, you know, I, I do remember back then, you'll probably laugh at this, but there was, there was a guy called Hank Marvin in the shadows and he happened to be on TV a lot in those days. Mm -hmm. And every time he came on, he had this great guitar. And I thought, wow, oh, the sound that's coming out of that. And I was five, you know, five years old, six years old. And I thought, got to do that, you know. <laughs> and so my first guitar was a, a Strat copy, but it had to have the whammy bar on it that I could make all those sounds. Um, and then I ran, I think it was um, the band Free came out in... Um, I think it was the end of 60s, uh, maybe 1970. And that was the first album that I actually bought was um, Fire and Water by the band Free. And the, as soon as I heard the first chord, few chords, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I mean, they're like a, a, a blues. If you don't know the band, check them out because it's a long time ago. I appreciate that. But it's... Um, very uh, minimalistic blues rock. Um, and I'd never heard anything like it before. I didn't know what blues was then anyway. Uh -huh. And I had to check that out later. But um, I love the sound on the guitar. Uh, everything about it appealed to me. And I still like that sound, you know. I still uh -huh. like to go back and revisit those old bands, you know, Eric Clapton and um, uh -huh. Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck. Uh, Rory Gallagher, Gary Moore. I mean, and each one of those players, you only have to hear a few notes and you know it's them. They have an identifiable yeah. sound. And that really appealed to me that you can express yourself through music and have your own identity, you know? Mm. Yeah, that's actually a really nice answer. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Uh, do you have any upcoming releases or anything like that? Like yeah, uh, I guess the current, the current studio album is an album called Transcendence, and I guess it's been out for about a, a year now. It was part recorded in Poland and part here, and um, it, it, I'm very pleased with it. It did very well initially when it was first uh, released and uh, had a lot of critical acclaim and so on. Uh, but just before the lockdown, we released a live album, but unfortunately we've been able to we haven't really been able to do anything with it, like tour yeah. or to promote it. So, but um, I guess we're gonna have to put that right very soon. It's called Up Close and Live. And um, it's, it was recorded live in Poland. Again, I'm very pleased with it. And um, we need to get it out there, really. We were planning tours in this country and so on. They were all booked, but of course we had to cancel. And so, I mean, these days, there's very little point in bringing out an album unless you're going to tour and, and take yeah. it on the road, you know. So we, we've kind of pulled, put the stops on it for now, but we'll have to, we'll have to put it out somehow, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that's partially what we're here for is to help you guys put out your yeah. albums and help promote it a little. Although I imagine you've probably got a bigger following than Tune River does, so... <laughs> well, maybe. Uh, we, we've got quite a following on social media and uh, YouTube and all that and uh, yeah. around the world. But um, I like the idea of Tune River. It's a great idea. Uh, it's something different. It, uh, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, it's, it's people have a special occasion and they buy a song, don't they? And you personalize yeah. the song for anniversary or thank you or birthday or something like that. And um, I, I like to explore different 
things to do. I always have done. I've done computer games and uh, music for computer games, uh, TV, radio, jingles, all that kind of stuff. Because you can't, you can't be on the road all the time, you know. Mm. So I've always combined it with other things. So a new idea, I like the ideas, you know. Yeah, actually quite nicely leads on to the Q&A part with one of the questions is what do you like about being a Tune River artist and what drew you in? But I feel like, there you go, that's a... Uh, well, that's I've already just started doing it really. So uh, yeah. I, I, I've already said what I think about the idea. It's a great idea, but it does seem to me like there's a, a, a little community building as well where you've got various artists that are all, maybe they're all in the same boat actually as me and uh, looking for different ways to keep going and uh, I think there's a little community that we can kind of support each other in as well so I think that's a good thing too. Yeah for sure have you uh, uh, I, I imagine you haven't met any of them but have you like either talked to or just taken a look at any of the other artists we've got signed or have you not got I, around to it yet? I have listened to them I'm, I know a couple of them. Anyway. All right. Um, Mark James I, I've mm. come across before so I like what he's doing. Um, Vince Freeman. Vince, Vince Freeman? I, forget. Yeah. I couldn't forget. Yeah, great songwriter, and I like what he's doing mm. too, yeah. And um, yeah, obviously being from the same town, we've, we've, uh, our paths have crossed occasionally. Yeah. 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 Are you in Cheltenham as well? Yeah, yeah, that's my Yeah, oh, very nice. <laughs> Where are you based then? Uh, I'm Cheltenham as well. I'm currently okay. in Cardiff, because I'm oh, just okay. my girlfriend, but yeah, I, I'm based in Cheltenham. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, all right, so, uh, so on to the Q&A stuff, which artists would you say, whether past or present, inspire you? And again, you've pretty much already covered that, but if there's anyone else you can think of that you'd like to add? Yeah, okay, well, I mentioned that I, I'm a blues rock artist, but I, I actually do original songs. So I'm, although people know me as a guitarist, I'm probably... Uh, different to many in that I'm really a songwriter more than I am a guitarist probably. So as I grew up, yes, I was attracted to those guitarists that I've mentioned, or well, Peter Green I should mention as well, um, as he's just passed away. Uh, but I guess like all of us in that generation, we listened to the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and the songs of that. And my sister was into folk music, so she would be listening to Cat Stevens and uh, um, Fairport Convention and it wasn't really so cool for me because I wasn't really into that but I secretly liked quite a bit of it and then I came across this guy called John Martin who is more yeah. of a, on the folk scene great songwriter you see so mm -hmm. I've combined this love of song with guitar playing so that's kind of where I'm, I come from really so it's, it's good songs that inspire me yeah. you know, good songs and good playing you know good guitar playing very nice. Uh, what's the best gig that you've ever seen by another artist? Like, what's oh. the, whether you've been to it or just watched it online or something? Wow. Yeah, it's a, it, these uh, Q&A the ones. Best gig, I mean, I don't know. I mean, when you're young, I mean, I guess uh, in my 20s, uh, believe it or not, a lot of the touring bands used to come to Cheltenham Town Hall. And mm. uh, so... I would say the ones that influenced me the most were probably um, Free, because they came to Town Hall and I was a big fan of the band anyway. Uh, Rory Gallagher, and I saw Rory Gallagher several times in Bristol and um, there's so much as a guitarist that you could learn from Rory because he had lots of little tips and tricks in his style of playing, you know, um, harmonics and uh, slide mm. guitar and everything. So there was such a lot to learn from watching him play. So I, I would say he had a big influence on me and very memorable the times back then. Uh, I don't know about recently. Um, hard to say. Because I, when, it, when it's your kind of job, as it were, I know it's more than just a job, it's your passion and everything, but you see so many people just because you're on the same bill or, or you're at the yeah. festival or something, and they impress you. But... Um, you know, you're so wrapped up in what you do. And uh, I guess all the influences I have are so from way back, you know, really, mm -hmm. if I'm honest. Um, but there are some great players out there too. Um, 
you know, uh, currently. And there's a lot of younger players, which is healthy, I think, that are coming up. You know, uh, on, on my previous uh, studio album, I had Lawrence Jones play on it, who at the time was about 20, 21, 22. Uh, great, you, you can hardly tell us apart. He's like me, only younger. <laughs> so that's good, you know. Yeah. So healthy. Very nice. Uh, so the next one was, what's the best gig you've ever played? But I guess you covered that, talking about your time in Croatia. Well, it, yeah. Croatia has to be up there because, um, because of uh, just the location, the atmosphere, the crowd love it. But there's been a lot, you know, there's been several gigs like that in, in Poland, in Switzerland, in Germany. But the one that's, I guess it is Croatia that stands out because of the time we had there, you know. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Uh, on some slightly lighter ones, what would you say your favorite drink is? Whether that's alcoholic, non alcoholic? <laughs> uh, well, I'm a coffee addict, if we're talking <laughs> non alcoholic. I've got to have fine. coffee. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I like beer. I do drink beer, not too much, um, but a little bit, particularly after a gig or something like that. Vodka, I have to say. I've, I've grown accustomed to vodka being in Poland such a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it took a while. It, it took a long while to get used to it because we yeah. Brits, you know, go to mm -hmm. the pub, don't we, and have a beer. But they do the same only with vodka. <laughs> yeah. But I, I can't yeah. take too much. Not like a... My younger days, I was a bit of a rebel, but I'm not so much. <laughs> uh, what are some of your like favorite hangout spots around? Like, obviously now, stuff's a bit, you know, here, here and there. But like, say, what do you have any favorite like pubs or venues or anything around that you just like to go to and have a good time? Uh, no, not really. Do you know? Again, I don't. I I will support other musicians that I know of, um, but I don't go too often, especially in my local town, because there's always somebody going to come up to you and say, oh, uh, are you going to get up and play or something like that? <laughs> I just, I just want to, I just want to enjoy myself, you know? Yeah. So um, I tend to steer clear of that. So I guess my favorite thing to do when I'm home is just hang out with friends, you know, and, um, friends and family, you know, that's, that's what I love to do when I'm at home. Um, I can't say we've got a favorite pub or, or anything like that. We just choose a, a place and meet up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, if a song came on, what would make you dance and what would make you leave the room? <laughs> it would take quite a lot to make me dance. <laughs> <laughs> You're not much of a dancer. No, I don't think so. Um, but uh, to rephrase it then, what, what sort of, you know, what, what do you, what can you jam a bit to as opposed to what do you yeah. just dislike altogether? Well, okay. Well, if it was blues, you know, I've mentioned people like Clapton and, mm -hmm. and Free. You only had to hear one note. So once they play, once Clapton hits one note, I know instantly who it is and I'm hooked, right? Most mm -hmm. of the time. Um, so that would keep my attention. Or anybody that sounds like that, you know, anybody that's got that fire, you know, somebody like Walter yeah. Trout from current times, if he was to come on the radio, I would know exactly who it was and I'd, mm -hmm. be, I'd be hooked, you know. Uh, Joe Bonamassa is a great guitarist. I'd probably, I'd, he'd hold my attention, that's for sure. Um, uh, the ones I would walk out of the room not in disgust, but I don't relate. I'm, I'm sorry to say, I don't relate to rap music. That's <laughs> fine. Um, I like some country music, but I like modern country music. Not, mm -hmm. If it's the old finger in the ear country music, I probably wouldn't want to listen to that much. Uh, but I'm quite open, you know. Opera, I don't like opera much. <laughs> but pretty much everything else, I, if it's good, you know, it will hold my attention. Fair enough. Uh, what's the song by another artist that you wish you'd written yourself? Well, there's so many, aren't there? Uh, 
yesterday by Paul McCartney, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, or Long and Winding Road, maybe. Or um, uh, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. <laughs> mm. Or, you know, um, there's classics, aren't there? Absolute classics that you kind of think, well, they sound simple enough that you had to come up with those ideas, original ideas. Mm -hmm. And they had, to, they had to not only be good, but they had to capture people's imagination and stand the test of time. Um, and I don't think you can plan for that, can you? It just, wow. it just happens, you know. So many bands, like, I think when Free wrote All Right Now, right, I think they thought, oh, I don't know if it's good enough. <laughs> I mean, now it's been played for yeah. 40 odd years, you know, around the world for 40 years, and just a classic song, isn't it? But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, think, I don't think too much about it. I just write what I write. Um, and hope yeah. that people like it, you know. Yeah, I mean, look at someone like the Beatles. Paul McCartney said that none of them could read or write music and they didn't know music right. theory. They just played what they felt and that yeah. got them somewhere, didn't it? Didn't he say that he dreamt yesterday? He, he yeah, had something like that. The whole complete and <laughs> somebody else must have written it. I wish that would happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good, wouldn't yeah, it? Be good. Dream, dream a classic song that... <laughs> everybody loves wouldn't that be great <laughs> uh on a similar note what song that you've written are you most proud of well that's a that's a good question because um you know the songs that i think are good aren't necessarily the ones that everybody else thinks are <laughs> good um well that's a tough one let me think um yeah take your time hmm. I mean, some of the songs that I do live, obviously, if I've been playing them for years, there must be something about them mm. that, that I still think are good for, for whatever reason. I think um, some, of, some of the songs that I've written, there's a song I wrote years ago called Simple Faith that uh, actually nobody's really heard that much, but there's something about it that I think is quite a complete complete song but I guess it doesn't really fit what I'm doing so out of the current sort of crop of songs uh, there's one on the Transcendence album that's called Never Happy Unless I've Got the Blues <laughs> mm -hmm. and I like it it's, I'm, I think it's a good riff uh, it's a good catchy song and I like it because some of the lyrics are written about friends of mine and the things they've said so it means something to me yeah. It might not necessarily mean anything to anyone else. That's the thing. It's just got this hooky little title, you know, never happy unless I've got the blues, you know. Um, so it's kind of humorous, but I quite mm -hmm. like that. I like the fact that it's got a bit of humor in it. Uh, it's, it's a catchy song. Um, I'd have to give it some more thought to think of anything else. <laughs> that's all right. That's, no problem. Off the top of my head, that's all I can think. Uh, and the... Do you, are you on anything like Spotify or stream services, Apple Music and all that? I, and I guess you kind of have to be at this yeah. point, don't you? I'm, but, I'm not a big fan of Spotify or, yeah. uh, because obviously, you, as you probably realise, uh, the, the royalty rate for musicians is like peanuts. And so I kind of, I do have this battle against the, mm. uh, the, this idea that music is free or nearly free. Uh, but yeah. so what I did with Spotify is that um, I, when I released a new album, I would not allow it to go on Spotify for maybe a year. So, because I thought, well, if it's on Spotify, nobody's going to want to buy it, are they? So yeah. I, I would hold back on allowing it on the uh, streaming sites. Uh, but event, so basically my back catalogue, everything in my back catalogue is on Spotify. And, and you can find me on all these things, I, iTunes and what have you. Um, uh, I, I think in the future, there really should be some sort of regulation that uh, musicians get their fair cut, yeah. because otherwise it's unsustainable, really. But I know I, it's no point complaining. It's out there. The boat, that boat sailed, hasn't it? So, um, yeah. yeah, you have to play the game a bit. And mm. uh, so, yes, it's all out there, but the newer stuff, you can only get from my website, really, or, you know, okay. distributors. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, Leo actually quite recently. How long ago was it? Like mid August, he uh, said he wants to us as a company to take more of a stand against these, obviously the unfair treatment of um, artists on streaming services. So we're trying to figure out some stuff around that, how we can obviously help support you guys with it and just try, I don't know, use what little influence we have to change these platforms. Because it is ridiculous how little royalties the artists actually get. Like obviously I don't know myself, I don't have anything on there, but from what I understand, well, it's not a lot. It should be, in my view, it's like a radio station, isn't it? So if, you're, if your track is played on the radio, you get, and they log it, you get your royalty as the songwriter. Okay, so if Spotify was seen as a, in, for argument's sake, it's like a digital radio, isn't it? You can go on there and stream what you like. You can choose what you listen to, but it's basically being broadcast to you, isn't it? Yeah. So um, at those royalty rates then should at least line up with, in my view, they should line up with a royalty rate that you would get from streaming on the radio. Yeah, for definite. Um, yeah. And that never deterred people buying things, did it? When it was on the radio, it didn't deter people from buying things. But I think pe that people are less likely to want to own music now yeah. than they used to be, to be, fair, to be completely blunt about it. Um, and I think that's a shame, really. You know? Mm. Yeah. No, I, I still love buying because I've got a record player back home and I know vinyl has become like more of a popular thing again, but I do love yeah. just being able to actually go and buy a physical copy of an album, even if I don't listen to it much. It's, uh, it's a nice little memento to have, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, in it, I'm from the generation where people used to get into a, an artist and know everything about that artist and mm -hmm. probably have all their albums and stuff. And you would listen to the, the album from start to finish and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. people pick and choose now, don't they? Mm. I mean, remember Pink Floyd? I mean, you could just put on, I'm going to the Pink Floyd planet, planet now, and you could put on <laughs> Dark Side of the Moon and listen to it right from start to finish. But people just pick out the odd track now and go, oh, I like yeah. that track. Who's that by? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I've lost it now. It's on my phone. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so really, I mean, it's harder, you know, well, you can't blame people because from the, from the um, consumer point of view, going onto Spotify and finding new artists or listening to stuff for free is great, isn't it? Yeah. But take it to yeah, it's logical, very useful for us. <laughs> take it to its logical conclusion. And mm -hmm. why would artists spend thousands of pounds making an album in the studio for virtually give it away? It's not going to happen long run, in the long run, is it? Yeah. So, I don't know. I haven't got the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Just to say, something's going to change with it soon, I imagine. So. Yeah. All right, so, um, let's move on. Outside of music, what are some of your interests? What do you like to do? Um, well, do you know what? I, I like to get out walking, cycling, Mm -hmm. Gen general things like that. I like getting out in nature, so I like to walk along like the towpath from Gloucester to Frampton and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, I just love doing that. Um, I I like getting together with friends, family. Um, I watch a bit of TV, and when we used to be able to go to the cinema or the theatre, I would do that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just normal stuff, really. Yeah, fair enough. My social life. I like. I, I yeah. like to social. That's what's hard about now, isn't it? Because yeah. I can make music on my own, but uh, but uh, we haven't got that interaction with other people. Like we 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 feed off each other in the band, and and I like to socialise and see what audience reaction is and all this sort of stuff. But you know, you can. There's only so much you can do locked down in in your own little. Uh, like this is my little home studio here, you know. Mm -hmm. And I can do that for hours on end, but it, it misses that interaction from someone else, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, hopefully it won't be long. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Yeah. All right, it was very nice uh, to uh, Nice meet to you. meet you. Uh, all right, it all yeah. worked, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right, have, okay, a, have a great day.
See you in a Thanks bit. Thanks a lot. You too. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.